Thanks for joining us for the second installment in our video series providing an overview of the Southwestern North Carolina Opportunity Initiative. The first video provided context for the Southwestern region of North Carolina. In this video, the Regional Investment Guide, we'll examine how the regional vision for growth can be seen through computer modeling and mapping, and how we might be able to use those models as a roadmap to achieve our goals. In September and October of 2013, the Optin Project held community workshops in each of the seven counties and in the Koala Boundary. During these workshops, the public was invited to review the project's work to date and to talk about how to move forward. Comments made by participants in these community workshops led to five broad goals that served as a regional vision reflecting what the region aims to accomplish. To help illustrate the choices that can be made as the region prepares for growth, we developed a series of suitability and conflict maps. With these maps, we can easily view areas where potential land use conflict may exist and trade-offs may need to happen. Let's discuss what a suitability map is. A suitability map is the result of suitability modeling, which is a process that determines the fitness of an area of land, ranking from high to low in suitability, or appropriateness, for a specified use. This is a suitability map showing land suitable for agriculture in the opt-in region. Let's see how the suitability map was created. The opt-in analyst decided that flat land, good soils, and lands that have been historically used for agricultural purposes would make an area suitable for agriculture. When all of these factors are put together, you can see which lands in the region are most suitable for agriculture. Suitability maps, then, can be very helpful in answering the question, what is the best location? As they help us understand limitations and potentials for different land uses and show areas where future land use conflicts are likely to occur. With these tools, you can identify balances between economic development and open space preservation to help achieve desirable growth while preserving the character of the region. How is suitability in these maps determined? Determining suitability begins by defining the goals of a region and using those goals to understand what factors are important to compare while considering uncertain futures and a changing landscape. For the opt-in suitability analysis, we use the baseline vision report and feedback received during the community meetings to develop a draft regional vision framework. The opt-in suitability analysis looks at many different conditions of the land area, including natural, cultural, and economic aspects of the region with factors such as existing land use, lands managed for conservation, existing roadways, aquacultural lands, and surface slope and floodplains, among many others. The result of the opt-in suitability analysis was three maps, one for urban suitability, one for agricultural suitability, and one for conservation suitability. Now that the suitability maps have been developed, we can combine them to see areas where there might be conflicts or overlaps of land use in the region. This conflict map illustrates the trade-offs that must be made between development and agriculture, with areas in the darkest reds indicating the lands that are suitable for both uses. For instance, the stretch of land surrounding US-19 between Andrews and Murphy has a possible conflicting land use. It's suitable for both urban development and for agriculture. Having flat terrain has allowed it to be a commonly used throughway, which also subjects the land to higher pressure for development, but it has historically been used for agriculture. It is in places like this where trade-offs between possible land uses must be discussed and decisions must be made for moving forward. The suitability and conflict maps taken together and combined with the results of the feedback received at the community meetings leads us to a final regional investment guide map. This map helps us to see and understand the regional vision. It takes into account the growth we expect to see, the community's direction in how to best use our resources, and the trade-offs we should anticipate and discuss all to help envision a better future for our region. The Regional Investment Guide helps to realize our vision, but how do we get there? The following principles were developed using recurring themes and the ideas collected at the community workshops. These principles express the community's intent. They do not say what needs to be done, but how to approach relevant aspects of the vision consistent with the community's ideas and values. We understand the many assets that our natural landscape brings to the region, but how can these assets best be maintained? For pillar number one, the place we're given, development should preserve important environmentally sensitive and scenic lands. Development should also be compatible with and respect the quality of life the region already enjoys. For example, these principles might help to maintain and preserve a high standard of water quality that, as we've previously seen, is so important to the health of the natural world and the economy of the region. Healthy watersheds help to support our farmers and promote local agriculture and allow the region to continue being a leading destination for tourism, outdoor recreation, and artistic inspiration. For pillar number two, the economy we need, 
All elements of the vision should generate economic benefits to see that the entire region prospers with a diversified economy that supports small businesses, farming, entrepreneurship, and the wise use of natural resources. Along with region-wide economic benefits, economic development efforts should also recognize the important role the quality of life, natural beauty, and the uniqueness of the region play in attracting and keeping businesses and employees. It's important to note that tourism is a regional phenomenon. It's less affected by local policies than by policies that cross county boundaries. A regional transportation, natural resource protection, or marketing policy designed to leverage tourism revenues adopted through the cooperation of multiple jurisdictions is likely to have a much greater impact on the region's tourism than a similar policy made at the local level. By holding true to these principles, region-wide infrastructure projects could be implemented, such as an extensive high-speed internet network or possible access to natural gas. For pillar number three, the places we make, conversion of land from rural to urban should be orderly and take into account the region's unique character. With growth expected to occur, how might the mountain character of each town be preserved while also accommodating changes that make the best use of available resources? For example, the community indicated that increasing housing density around village centers might bring residents and visitors closer to shops, restaurants, and businesses, making local economic opportunities more available while preserving natural landscapes as people are traveling less to reach homes, jobs, and recreation. Speaking of transportation, pillar number four addresses the ways we get around. Beginning with what we know, we can once again identify the principles consistent with community values and ideas. They spoke, and it was identified that roads should ensure safe and efficient travel. Transportation improvements should respect the unique environment and geographical features of the region, and towns and communities should be served by a variety of transportation options, such as walking, biking, and public transit, in addition to the use of the automobile. What is the best way to move forward? Is there a perception that goods and services are too far away from where people live? How important is it to have a choice of travel modes within the region? How might the ways in which workers commute shape transportation options? Remember the commuting story from Graham County. In following these principles and the others we've already discussed, the number of people who both live and work in Graham County is increased, reducing their community miles and the time and expense associated with them. Finally, for pillar number five, the quality of life we expect, the regional vision should support culture, arts, and heritage as essential elements of the region's prosperity. The vision should also facilitate equitable access to health services, housing, and education. For example, the limited medical facilities in the region, along with the region's remoteness, does not attract qualified physicians, while the aging population throughout the region, who will require more health services, further complicates the issue. Residents in rural communities certainly have challenges to healthcare access, but how might improved access also affect workforce training and healthcare facilities? So now we can see how the opt-in process has helped to identify and confirm broad, long-range goals for the region, as well as a range of priorities that have the best chance of advancing those goals, all while sustaining a regional consensus. For more information on the regional vision, the goals, the regional investment guide, or any other aspect of the opt-in process, please visit www.optinswnc.org. Thanks for watching.